Root lesion nematodes are tiny microscopic worms about half a millimetre in length that feed and reproduce in plant roots. This can lead to large yield losses in intolerant cereal and pulse crops. Two important species of root lesion nematodes are Pratolanchus thornii and Pratolanchus neglectus. Either species may be found separately or together in mixed populations. Nematodes invade the roots of growing plants. When nematode numbers are high, this can cause damage to the roots and affect nutrient and moisture uptake. Crops with damaged root systems can suffer nutrient deficiencies and become quickly moisture stressed as soil moisture becomes limiting. This often occurs towards the end of the growing season or in dry years. Low nematode populations and favourable growing conditions may mask the effects of the injury to plant roots during the growing season, but show up at harvest as decreased crop yields. These lower yields are often attributed to other causes and nematodes remain a hidden problem. Research has shown intolerant wheat varieties can lose between 50 and 70 per cent of their yield when nematode populations are high. Intolerant chickpea varieties have been known to lose 20 per cent of their yield. More recently, New South Wales DPI research in 2011 recorded yield losses of up to 43 per cent in intolerant wheat varieties. Nematodes must survive in the soil between crops and different tillage practices will affect their survival rates. Findings in research have found that nematode numbers may build up rapidly on wheat crops and decline slowly during fallow periods. Yeah. When the soil is dry and no living roots are available, nematodes become dormant and may survive in the root tissue of old crops. As soils become wet again after rain, the nematodes become active and move to growing roots nearby. Juvenile and adult nematodes penetrate and feed in the root cells. Nematodes are migratory feeders and they move from outside cells towards the middle of the root. They search for fresh and young roots to feed on as older roots die. Female nematodes lay eggs in the roots and three to four generations of nematodes may develop during a single cropping season. A single female nematode can lay up to 20 eggs several times through the growing season. These generations can all occur within a root system, so populations of nematodes can be low in the soil and yet high in the roots at the same time. The nematode numbers on good hosts may increase to more than 100,000 nematodes per gram of dry roots. As soils start drying at the crop harvest stage, nematodes become inactive again as they dry out. They remain dormant until the soil next becomes wet. Research in Queensland has confirmed that once po high populations of Pratolanchus thornii are established in a paddock, they can survive very long fallow periods, in some cases eight years without a crop, particularly in the subsoil. These numbers can rapidly increase to damaging levels on susceptible host crops. Plant symptoms caused by nematodes can be difficult to identify. Symptoms of nutrient deficiency may be due to poor root functioning, despite adequate available soil nutrients. Plants may show poor vigour, stunted growth and poor tillering. Affected crops may wilt even in moist soils. Damaged plants may occur in large or small patches within a crop. Digging up plants and washing the roots can show black and brown coloured root lesions indicating tissue death. Whole sections of the root system may be dead. When nematode numbers are high, roots are often thin with very little branching. It can be very difficult to distinguish between damage from nematodes and fungal root diseases like rhizoctonia or takeall. Populations of nematodes of 2,000 nematodes per kilogram of soil and higher is the threshold for yield loss in intolerant crops. At these levels or greater, growers need to choose a tolerant crop variety or rotate to a resistant crop according to the identified nematode species. To test a paddock for the presence of nematodes, it is important to follow recommended procedures. This includes taking a minimum number of soil samples from different locations in the paddock, as well as at different soil depths. Handling and storage of the soil samples too is important for reliable results, avoiding high temperatures in particular. Soil samples may be sent to a testing laboratory at either the Leslie Research Centre at Toowoomba in Queensland or to SARDI in Glen Osmond in South Australia. 
Details on sampling procedures are available at their websites. Root lesion nematodes are a hidden problem in many paddocks. Soil testing is the first step in identifying the magnitude of the problem and identifying which species of root lesion nematodes are present. This will allow strategic crop and variety choices to be made in local farming systems to reduce their impact. Testing for root lesion nematodes should be considered before the next cropping season. Do you have root lesion nematodes in your paddocks? For further information, contact your New South Wales DPI local district agronomist. Thank you.